nighttime. The one true side of hunting left yet to be explored. For decades, hunting at night has been shunned and even outlawed in many places. But given this opportunity, we are here to show the world exactly what they're missing out on and truly how much fun hunting a predator at night can really be. We are the night crew, and this is what we do. This is one of those things, until you've seen it with your own eyes, you'll never understand it. Until you've experienced it firsthand, you'll never understand why we do what we do. We started this thing several years ago, never really intending on taking it this far. But honestly, before we knew it, one thing led to another, and we had basically created this monster. In the beginning, we had no idea what we had done and for sure didn't account for the opposition that we would face once people finally saw what we did. And there were plenty of people who jumped up and said, no, nah, you can't do that. Only problem is I've never been a good listener and I've dang sure never been one to follow someone else. As far as I'm concerned, there's no right or wrong way to hunt at night. All we did is take the funnest sport on the planet and we did it our way. We are all complete addicts. And if anybody tried to come and tell us we had to stop, <laughs> good luck with that. A writer by the name of Maya Angelou once said, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. This story began many years ago, long before Night Crew ever was. We were just hunting buddies, out for kicks, just wanting to make a night hunting DVD. Little did we know, the journey that would follow would stick with us for the rest of our lives. I'm Chris Robinson, and for me to tell this story the way it needs to be told, we have to go back to the beginning. That was the night where everything started. I've said since day one, if we can show the world night hunting in a way they've never seen it before, to the point that they can enjoy it only half as much as we did actually being there, then we've accomplished our goal. Unfortunately, after an entire year of filming with a red light and only mediocre footage to show for it, we quickly realized that's a little bit easier said than done. Talk about frustrating. We could call predators left and right and couldn't get them on camera. The red light was killing us and we knew at that point it had to go. So the following year we collectively decided to try a white light. We had no idea if it would even work, but surprisingly the animals responded to it just as they did before and the clarity of the footage was at a whole new level. Unfortunately there were still problems 
It didn't take long to figure out that filming with any kind of a handheld light at night, no matter the color, was always going to be a problem. No matter how steady the person was holding the light, a beam from a handheld light was never going to be as steady and in sync with the camera. It was that simple. I was still not satisfied, and I knew we could do better. So the following year, I decided to take matters into my own hands and built the world's first camera-mounted light designed specifically to film predators in the dark. I just wanted a rig that no matter where I pointed my camera, I would always have light. But none of us realized the impact that decision would have on the path that we're still on today. It was at that moment in this journey where everything changed. For the first time in history, a viewer could watch predators coming to a call at night and actually enjoy it. You could see everything. For the first time in history, we finally figured out a way to translate the fun we have hunting predators at night onto a TV screen. And night hunting from a viewer's perspective hasn't been the same since. So the question is, where do we go from here? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Everyone calls us night crew because doing what we do takes an extra person or two to really get the job done right. And if there was one person I care to have on the gun when it's game time, there is no doubt it would have to be my best friend, Jared Clark. He's been there since day one and is unquestionably one of the best shooters I've ever hunted with. And we just pulled up to the spot, pretty pressured area, and it doesn't help. We just went through a mud pit trying to get in here. Uh, Diesel made quite a bit of noise, but Heck, you never know. We uh, sat in the truck and we were just talking for a couple minutes to let things calm down. But we killed a cat, or uh, called up a cat last year and uh, wound up winding us. It was a pretty small cat, so we didn't lose any sleep over it. But this is about as close as we could get to the little stand of timber where it was at. Hopefully, we can uh, seal the deal. The area we were hunting is actually one of the most pressured areas in the entire county, but it also happens to have some of the best roads out of the places we have access to, to be able to get in and out without tearing the place up with all the rain we've been getting. I'll be honest, our expectations on this stand were very low going in. We figured if anything, we might get lucky on that cat from last year, but neither of us expected what was about to happen.
he's like a world record distance away at like 20 yards. I don't know if that's the furthest or the shortest, but let's go get this thing. Dude, the coyote just does not get prettier than this. This coyote is freaking beautiful. There's not a thing wrong with this coyote. Oh my gosh. Jared is one of those guys who's just got it. His skills with a rifle are literally second to none. This one was obviously a 20 yard chip shot at best, but I've seen him make some shots on coyotes that I thought there was just no way, and he'll put them down. I would stack him against any shooter I have ever personally seen. Not on paper, but shooting coyotes, he's the best. You know, we've been out hunting for a little bit tonight. Stuff started moving once the moon came up, so the moon's still up, stuff's still moving. We gotta, we gotta go do what we do. He's gonna make a pretty hat. <laughs> Let's go do another one. It's always nice when you can take one for a ride in the back of the truck. And come rain or snow, you can bet we'll be out doing what we love to do. One thing's for sure, you can't kill anything sitting at home on the couch. Hunting at night is just one of those things you have to work to get good at. You have to scout and put time in if you expect to be successful. Experience has taught us anytime you roll into a place after dark, you're in their domain. So before we step foot in someone else's house in the middle of the night, we kind of like to know our way around first. This landowner had been having problems with the very large bobcat killing her guineas and chickens, and we were here to do her a favor. We are not here to eliminate predators altogether because they are a natural part of our ecosystem. However, we are here to help manage and control them when the need arises, especially when you have a particular problem coyote or bobcat wreaking havoc in a place they don't belong. We had done our homework and put the time in to know the lay of the land, but little did we know it would take several attempts to finally get a glimpse of this thief in the night.
Yes, that's a big cat. Big cat. Bobcats are creatures of habit, and I knew the moment this cat sat down, he knew exactly where the chicken coop was located on this property, because he couldn't take his eyes off of it. Their attention span can be real short at times, and it seems his past experiences of raiding the local chicken house are about the only thing on his mind. That is, until we threw him a curve and played him a different tune. Changing sounds on a hung-up cat at night can be a good thing, as long as you pick the right sound. And if you're wondering how you'll know if you pick the right one, eh, don't worry, he'll be sure to tell you. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Dude, that's a big cat. Whenever he was crossing by that steel piping, man, he was like above the second rung on that. Holy crap. Dude, that's a big cat. Whew. Dude, who would ever thought he had come from that way? That is a road. He was running down a paved road. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, old Jennifer's gonna be happy. She's been after us for about, I don't know, six or seven months telling us about this big cat. And she kept saying, oh, this cat's big. It's, I've seen it, it's this big bobcat. And uh, you know, we've hunted, we killed quite a few coyotes off this place, but never, never seen a cat till now. That's a pretty cat and big. <laughs> oh my God, she's gonna be happy. She's got all those guineas and chickens and stuff running around. She's gonna be thrilled to death. I think I might have to text her and tell her. I don't think there's any need to carry the gun with us. I've pretty much plowed him through. So she's, uh, her lights are still on in her house. We had texted her as we were pulling in, and of course I texted her, hey, we got the cat. Man, she's thrilled to death. She wants to see it, and I want to show it to her. This has been a dandy year for cats. Oh my gosh. Oh, man, for this area, this thing is a toad. Let me go ahead and turn him. Just big, fully mature. At some point in his life, he may actually weigh more than what he does now, but uh, his body wasn't gonna get any bigger. He's full grown. The, the cats here in North Texas aren't gonna get huge. You know, if you kill one, you know, between 25 and 30 pounds, you've killed yourself a, a really big cat um, in, in our area. Uh, look at that. Dark coloration all the way down his back. The bobcat racing stripes. I guarantee you he weighs close to, yeah. That's a freaking dandy, Chris. Yeah, he's gonna go well over the 25 mark. That's a, that's a good cat. This absolutely never in a million years 
will this get old to me. God, I love it. I love it, I love it. Hey, Mr. McCarthy, how are you? We finally got it. It's a big one, too. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No wonder he was eating them like any. I'm, I'm telling you. Talk about one happy landowner. There's nothing better than being able to help someone who possibly can't help themselves and seeing the genuine look of appreciation on their face when they realize you've truly done them a favor. Finally got it done for you. I'm glad he's gone. Maybe my guineas will get some rest now. Well, I hope so. I'm down to one chicken. Oh, really? One chicken and a handful of guineas? <laughs> yeah. That's what it's all about. It's a big old cat. Yeah. A full-grown Tom.